few days ago, the worldwide climate strike showed the urgency and power people all over the world demand for serious and future-oriented climate protection. Your research is exactly what is needed in these times. There's clear evidence in the temperature record that most of the warming occurred rapidly over the last 40 years. We need to focus better or more on improving model physics and uh, trying to get the initial conditions, initial state for our forecast from the model and not by correcting it with data simulation. And of course there's no direct analogue in the geological record for what's going to happen during the rest of this century and into the next, so we have to keep that uh, in mind. We want to give our participants the opportunity to get to know their climate manager in their city and they come to the course and tell the participants what they can do on their local basis. It's very important for predictability, the evaporation, and that it also has an impact on the, the, the rainfall types that, that occur after, after a, as a result of that evaporation. So it can affect the rainfall intensity. Um, the rainfall intensity itself then can affect floods and droughts on the land, which are an important part of how weather affects humans. The next generation of scientists, like they're picking up data science, they can deal with like really big streams of data and analyse it in a new way. And so what I'm finding with the new scientists is that they, they can kind of have a, a fresh approach to this and really look at like anal using data science to look at aspects of the weather that we've never really looked at before. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. No snow border. We can all make a change. Make a change together. We can all make a change. Make a change together. Climate change, no snow borders. We can all make a change together. That is an interesting issue that will, of course, touch the Arctic as well. How will China in the future ask for environmental, how to say, stewardship from Russian energy production, be it Arctic or otherwise. When we speak about science, we speak about natural sciences and humanities at the same time. This is again science diplomacy, huh? because they see it in their, in, their, in their backyard that climate is changing, uh, and of course with the Arctic Council you will have a mechanism and a forum to really speak out with a loud voice on CO2 issues. I think for the Arctic region itself, it's extremely important that we continue the science diplomacy that already has taken place in the last 20 odd years. It's very important that uh, researchers, they, they take part in public debate uh, based on, on what they're doing. Uh, and that they um, take part in media debate, etc. investigated um, pollen proxies, so pollen uh, from lake sediments uh, as an uh, yeah, indicator of past climate changes. We compared uh, the tree pollen, so it's extracted from, from those uh, lake sediments um, across the globe. Uh, finally, you can visualize this as a paleoclimate network 
uh, of Pollen Records. And there's also the possibility to, to cooperate in between the different players on the campus. So that's a general idea in sense of a holistic smart city strategy. We have the chance to get the most recent results, which is entitled Ocean and Cryosphere in a Changing Climate, which has been released this morning in Monaco. We have found that even and especially in these places, human-caused climate change is evident. There are some systems changing at global level. There needs to be one thing with a high priority, and that is deep cuts in emissions. Take the messaging from this report, our ocean and cryosphere. They sustain us, they are under pressure. Their changes affect all our lives. The time for action is now.